Well, thank you very much, Ken Workington. Welcome, everybody, to a huge night at the Big M. And we are joined by our leading driver, Yannick Gingra, who just got back from Sweden, where he raced Maven in the Elite Lap last Sunday. Looked like one of the greatest experiences a horseman could ever undertake. And based on everything I've read about your comments, you loved every minute of it. Oh, I certainly love every minute of it. Uh, it was definitely, for me, the, be the best experience I've ever had racing horses. Um, you know, e everything. You know, I mean, I, I was doing a, an interview today about, about it, and the, uh, the lady asked me, she said, uh, is there something, one thing you, you would change, you know what I mean, that, uh, about, about the whole weekend if you would change it? And, and there really there is nothing I would change. You know, uh, from the crowd to, uh, to the trainers over there, the drivers, um, no, everybody, you know, I mean, everybody treats you real nice. The crowd is, you no know, cheers everybody. You know, they don't only cheer on Swedish horses or on French horses, or they cheer everybody. There's a horse on the racetrack, they cheer him. They cheer him on, you know, and uh, it was a wonderful experience. Um, you know, maybe if there was one thing I'd change is the result. But uh, other than that, it, it was good. You know, I, I, I loved it. I really did love it, and I, I certainly will be back. Just watching on TV, Yannick, it reminded me a lot of the Little Brown Jug. The crowd was really into it, and the racing played the same way. It looked like speed, and you had to be forwardly placed, or you couldn't win. Uh, nothing against the Little Brown Jug. I love the Little Brown Jug, but uh, their Saturday, you know, the day before the Elite Lop, looks like Little Brown Jug. You know what I mean? It's it's nothing I could ever imagine. I've watched videos of it before the races, no, before I went there, and you see the crowd, and you're like, okay, that looks like a Little Brown Jug, but. You get there and it's um, it's unbelievable. You got to experience it. Anybody that's a horseman, or anybody that has anything to do with with horses, uh, should go and experience it at, at least one time. Before the first elimination, when the crowd started that rhythmic clapping, I got goosebumps. So that was on a Sunday morning at like 9 a.m. Just to be there, it had to be just amazing to hear the response. It is, and and the roars from the crowd. You know, I I love that stuff, and I was trying to get him pumped up, and uh, and they, they really were feeding it off of it. You know, I mean, the uh, it, it was a good time. Um, you know, there's not enough good things I can say about it. Well, let's take a look at Maven and her elimination. You got away toward the back. You were third over as we roll it in from here. And really, every time you started to edge out three wide, somebody had tried to come out underneath you, it looked like. Yeah, yes and no. Uh, Bjorn Goop, he told me I, I was edging out coming out the second turn, and he, uh, he told me, go ahead, I'm not ready. You know, uh, it, it, it's racing. You know, I mean, he, he had a good horse, and uh, maybe I put, pulled her a little bit too early into the last turn. Uh, it was my fault, maybe a little driver's error there. I think it cost me maybe second. You know, but, uh, but Yannick, for about three or four steps here at the top of the stretch, I thought you were going to win it. She kicked in and she was coming, and it was actually pretty close. At the, at the top of the stretch, I thought I was a winner, you know, and uh, and she got a little tired. You know, they, uh, you know these these horses are, are really strong horses that they keep going at the same speed all day long. Um, you know, she she gave 150 percent effort like she always does. And in the final, the race kind of went the same way. You were basically in the same spot. Yeah, no, going into the final, you know, you know it's, that's what's going to happen. I had her a little bit keyed up. Um, no, I, in, in elimination, it really wasn't part of my plan to leave. You know what I mean? Like, it, it was pretty set in my mind that something was going to have op no, to open up for me to, to take a shot out of the gate. It, the, the plan number one was to make the final. And, I mean, you go there, and, I mean, it would have been pretty bad not to make the final. I mean, I didn't want to be disappointed that way. So uh, I was trying to play it safe and... Uh, no, try to race her the second half. In the final, um, I knew so I had to make things happen. You know, I, I had her a little bit ready to leave. But, uh, you know, you need a special horse. And, and, like, and, and now I know her a little bit. Well, I'm, I've known her, but I know the racing over there. You know, it's a little bit different. And uh, if we do go back next year, I'm going to have her a little bit different. And, uh, but you need, you need to be able to, uh, to go from 0 to 60 in two stride. You know? So it's very different from the, the way it goes here. But um, I think she can do it. And you won a race on the undercard, if I'm not mistaken, Elite Lap Day? It, it was great. You know, I mean, I won a, you know, a, I don't know, you know, just a regular overnight. But, you know, the way they do it, it's, it's unbelievable. You go literally, if you're at the, on a five, eight mile track, like at Pocono, you would go from the winner's circle, which I messed that up. I didn't do it, but I, I learned from it. You're supposed to go all the way to the half, and there's people are, are packed like 100 deep, you know, and then the, everybody's cheering you on, and you're supposed to turn around and come back and go in front of the grandstand and head back to the paddock. Well, I didn't know that, so I just kept going all the way around. So uh, I miss uh, I miss that the, the winter circle presentation, but uh, it, it, it's wonderful. I mean, like it, there's the people are uh, are happy, really happy to see uh, foreigners you know, come in, and um, it was a lot, a lot of fun. Yannick, you look pretty refreshed considering your schedule yesterday. You drove in two countries. We saw you at the Meadows with Father Patrick. I think it was about uh, 6:55 or so, and he looked excellent. How did he feel? He felt excellent too. Uh, I mean, the race, you know, not that it would have mattered. I think, uh, you know, he proved he was you know, a few seconds the best in that bunch, but it kind of set up for me. It was nice to get a, a little bit of speed up front. 
will be able to uh, sit him in for five eighths of a mile and then let him trot from there. Uh, I couldn't be any happier from the way it's setting up. You know, uh, we only worry about one race and one race only. But you know, you're trying to build, you know, build the blocks and you no know, put a foundation into him. Where uh, you know, on the first Saturday in August, we're ready to turn him loose. We've got a little video from his first start at Pocono, and one thing that I noticed this year about the horse that I didn't, uh, that I saw a lot last year, he used to kind of toss his head around. This year, it looks like he's improved with that. Yeah, you know, last year he started out doing it, and then uh, as soon as the speed picked up a little bit, then he uh, he stopped doing it. Like it's just a little habit that that he has. It's, I mean, he's as square gated as he come. It doesn't seem to bother him. Uh, even yesterday at at, um, at the Meadows, he did it a little bit going to the half. He kind of asked for the bit. Um, you know, that that's Father Patrick being being him. You know, but. Uh, it's, it's never bothered him in the race, and it don't bother me. So you win with Father Patrick at the Meadows near Pittsburgh. Then you fly up to London, Ontario, to Western Fair for the Molson Pace with Foiled again. He got beat, but it was a three-horse photo on the line. How was the big guy last night? Uh, he's, he's unbelievable. You know, uh, you know I knew he was going to be a, a tough spot. You know, seven hole against a really, really a quality field. It's the best field, I think. Uh, I've been there, like, I think four or five of the, out of the last six years with him. And uh, there's never been a field like this, you know what I mean? Like there's always usually two or three horses and the rest of them are, are not quite as good. But yesterday was a deep field and I knew if I took him back, we weren't going to get much, you know what I mean? So uh, I took a chance and uh, no, 26 and one definitely you no know, took a stole on the old boy. But uh, he, he's again, he, that when he, uh, when he puts performance like this, he gets beat half a length, you know what I mean? Like uh, every other horse would have got beat five and not get a check. He gets beat half a length and uh, finishes third. He, he's just an unbe unbelievable racehorse. Man, you got some power to drive tonight in the Sire Stakes. Let's take a look at some of your drives. Let's start in the second race with the three Western Vintage, the three-year-old pacing colt. One of the top colts last year, just scary fast. He's got a crazy burst of speed. Uh, no, he's one that can go from zero to 60 in two stride. Um, you know, he, he, uh, he, he was right there at the top with the best one last year, and I think he, uh, if he's not you know, on the top, no, the best one, he's in the top three, or top two even, no, this year. I'm looking for big things from him. He's, uh, he's been coming back really strong. He's very Andy. Um, so far, I've been able to do whatever I wanted with him. So um, I, I'm looking for big things from him. Why did he make that break in his last qualifier? I have no idea. No, the first qualifier, actually, uh, if he was going to do it, he should have done it then because he was a little bit grabby then. And then uh, when, I, when I pulled him that day, he, j he wanted to go so fast. And like I didn't want to go too fast his first qualifier. And I really had to restrain him all the way to the wire. And he didn't do nothing wrong that day. And then the next week, you know, uh, Marcus and Nancy, he worked hard on him. And he, they brought him back, and he was perfect. You know, he's two-finger, and I pulled him. And he was just doing what he was supposed to do. And he was not taking off on me. And all of a sudden, around the last turn, he just exploded and made a break. Um, I kind of think maybe he just saw something, you know, jumped something. I, I don't know. But it's something you just... Uh, forget about it and move forward. Moving on to the third race, Sire Stakes final for the three-year-old trotting colt. You're driving number four, Martini, with muscle, but the big story here is Jimmy Tactor's other colt, Trixton. He has been awesome. Any comparisons with uh, Team Tactor with him and Father Patrick, or haven't you talked about it with Jimmy? You know, I, I was I drove him a couple times last year, and I was really impressed when I drove him. Uh, he, he was a you know, big, growthy colt, and he, uh, he was a little bit cold sore last year, and I always said he, he was uh, he was one of my biggest competition. I uh, I've told Jimmy that uh, you know, a few times this winter. I, I think he's a top horse, too. And, uh, but Father Patrick is still Father Patrick. Moving on to the fourth race, you've got Yoga, one of uh, three Tactor trainees in the three-year-old Philly Trot. What about her? She's a nice Philly. Uh, she uh, was a little short. She had a, you know, a little bit, uh, you know, qualified a little bit short. And in the, the first start, I raced her a little bit into the wind, and she got a little tired. Uh, she had a week off. I'm sure they trained her up pretty good. And, uh, you know, there's four, five, six fillies in this race that, uh, you know, whoever's going to get the best trip is going to win the race. But she's definitely one of those. Fifth race, number 10, getting ready to roll, three-year-old uh, pacing filly. Tactor again, here's how dumb I am. You win with her in 50-1. and one. I'm watching her in the pre-race warm-up the next week, and you're kind of looking around. She's not pacing quite as square as she was. I said, wow, she doesn't look as good. Wins in 50-1 and one right back. Yeah, she's, she's a real nice filly. I, um, the first time I, I, I qualified her, I really liked her. I thought that she had uh, all kinds of ability. And uh, she's proved it twice. You know, I think she was just as good both time. And I really think that the week off she has had last week certainly will help her. You know, I mean, uh, she's had two big, two big miles in a row. You know, where she had to be used. And unfortunately, we got the ten all tonight. But uh, I think if there's a horse in this race that can overcome it, it's her. I think uh, she can race from anywhere. She doesn't need the front. And I actually believe she might be better off a helmet. 
So, um, but no, obviously we're going to go forward off the gate and see what happens. And one last horse I want to ask you about. That's in the sixth race, number two, Sunfire Blue Chip. You didn't drive him last week. He put in one little step leaving the gate. Pierce had to take him back for position. Might have cost him the race there. He'll do that every once in a while. Yeah, he's done it all along. You know, I mean, uh, you got to trust him. You know, he, uh, you know, he's done it to me all of last year. And maybe halfway through the year, he kind of stopped doing it a little bit. Um, you know, that's just him. You know, he's a scary fast horse. And he's not the sound of source there is, but you know what? He tries 150%. And... I mean, it, this is kind of a soft bunch for him tonight. You know, I mean, they're quality horses, but I mean, there's a horse that raced Captain Treacherous and Sunshine Beach of all of last year, and it's going to race them all of this year. So, uh, I mean, he, he's supposed to, uh, he might not be 100, 100% yet, you know, uh, as far as peak form, but uh, it shouldn't matter. Well, Yannick, thanks so much for joining us. Congratulations on the opportunity and the elite lap with Maven. Sounds like the uh, trip of a lifetime and something you're looking forward to again. Oh, absolutely. Uh, yeah. All my friends in Sweden, I'm going to be back. All right, Yannick Jingra, everybody. 15 minutes until post time. Victor Espinosa is in the house. So is Hollywood Hayden. He's coming up next.